Welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, if you are brand new, hello, my name is Danny Walker. This is the recap for Miss Universe Colombia 2021. I'm gonna get right into this, but before we do, I have to say thank you to Jen Alvarado. She is the one who translated the onstage question for the top five and the top three. Now, if you are new to the channel, you might not know that I am only fluent in English. So when I recap pageants in other languages, I try my best to get the translations for the shows. So if you have a request for a pageant that is not in English and does not offer any English translations, then I have a huge favor to ask of you. Would you please send me translations of any crucial parts of the show or the onstage questions so I can have a better understanding of what's going on and offer you the best possible recap. With that being said, a lot of you have been requesting me to recap Miss Diva 2021 and I would love to do that, but I have not been able yet to find a link of the full show. So if you have access to that, please DM it to me on Instagram or send it in a message or leave it in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate that. Now let's talk about this show. Okay, loved the opening, loved the performer. The dresses that the contestants were in were fabulous. In fact, I actually wore a dress very similar to this to watch Miss USA 2019. See? Told you, there it is, we're twins. So obviously I'm a fan of their dresses. All I have to say is, my goodness, Colombia has no shortage of gorgeous women. This is a country I do not think that I would want to compete in. Too beautiful. I'd also like to say how nice was it to see Laura Miss Colombia 2017, who was first runner up at Miss Universe hosting this year's show. You guys, you know I love when they bring formers back. Great job. Such a great job. Speaking of formers, the other thing that I want to mention about Miss Colombia in general is that I think that it's interesting that they have done so well recently internationally at Miss Universe. I mean, among other pageants, like if we look back at the history of this, the 2020 title holder placed top 21, 2019, they were top five, 2017, first runner up, 2016, second runner up, 2015, first runner up also sort of winner kind of because of the whole Steve Harvey thing. 2014 Miss Universe. So consistently we're seeing them place, but I think it's interesting that I feel like they kind of go under the radar during Miss Universe season. Yes, we see them in predictions, but I don't feel like they get the same amount of hype as contestants in Asia. And that's just something really interesting to me because they've done so well historically. And I think they're about to do really well again this year. The interesting thing about this show for me is that they compete in gown and then swimsuit. I don't understand the reasoning behind that, but it is interesting. Personally, I think I'd still rather see swimsuit before. The contestants that stood out to me are as follows. Atlantico, beautiful, beautiful gown on her. I wish that the bodysuit wasn't as obvious though. And I have to say that's a really difficult thing to do to get that precise match. But I do love the draping and the stones. Her body, by the way, looked incredible in this. And she had a really, really wonderfully confident final look, that last moment before they went on to the next contestant. Bolivar, gorgeous. Gorgeous, wow, okay. Loved her, loved the performance. Now I do wish she would have gone with a different style of gown. I think that the shape from the top was widening her shoulders. I think that a more complimentary look would have been some sort of halter or a keyhole neckline. The other issue with how the dress was sitting on her is when she turned to the side, you can see some gaping happening on the side and it almost looks like there's about to be a wardrobe malfunction. Thank God that there wasn't. But that's just something to consider when it comes to fit for evening gowns that I want to mention for other contestants in the future. Cartagena was like a Barbie on stage. Her waist was out of this world. The gown was perfect on her. You could hear the crowd roaring for her. But what was really impressive about this performance for me is that regardless of the crowd, she kept her composure. And many contestants who are big fan favorites, they forget all of a sudden that they're competing because they hear the roar of that crowd. It becomes distracting and they, they lose their game face. She did not. Cordoba, beautiful gown on her. It was the first thing that I noticed. It was well fit to her body, very complimentary, great evening gown performance. 
The one thing I would change about the gown though is you could see the hem at the neckline and I really wish that would have been a true illusion bodice and that the mesh color would have blended into her skin tone a little bit more. Guajira was working it from the moment that she made eye contact with that camera. The gown, beautiful on her, great performance, immediately a standout to me and one of my favorites. Huila? This gown was beautiful on her. The color, the fit of it, the rhinestones, the pattern of it. I loved all of that. And what I liked about her personally is that she brought such a sweet energy to the stage. I felt sincerity from her when she was there and it made her so likable. Metha was very beautiful on stage. I want to mention that she's wearing this really pretty lavender color, and this is a color that we saw quite a bit at the most recent Sherry Hill Fashion Week. And so I think that a lot more contestants are gonna start wearing this color for a competition. I have to say it is beautiful. But getting back to her performance, I love the smile at the end. It was perfection. It was like the cherry on top of this performance. North de Santander was gorgeous loved this really unique color and the simplicity of this gown it reminded me of something you would see on a red carpet it was just unique not something i expected to see at this pageant but it worked for her Quindillo wore a gown that looked very heavy, not easy to walk in, but what impressed me about this is that she did it well. She glided across the floor and made it look easy, so I was still really focused on her performance instead of the gown. So I probably would have gone with something that was a little lighter on her because she does have such a small frame though, but regardless, great performance. Risa Aralda, instant favorite the energy she brought to the stage you could just feel a shift in the room the white with the silver details was perfect on her i think that the cape was overworked personally but regardless if i were judging i would still give her a great score and want to see her move on santander i loved this gown on her it was very unique we don't see very many high lows but i like that it was a high low that started on the side of the leg instead of the center i think that that adds a sense of formality to the gown and makes it more evening gown competition appropriate but i loved it i liked her performance although i do think she could have sped it up a little bit more unfortunately the version that i found online of this show froze at this point so i couldn't see any more gown performances that was unfortunate. I was really disappointed about that. And I want to mention that if you haven't subscribed just yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button before you exit this video. And if you want to continue to support the channel and see content like this, you can also check out my merchandise that is linked right below. For Swim, let's just acknowledge the performers beautiful the music was lovely i enjoyed it i think that that's a part of a successful show and a great organization is having great entertainment that complements the contestants and it was just something i thought was very beautiful and i want to acknowledge them atlantico wow that body that confidence it was amazing and i actually preferred this performance to her evening gown performance cartagena she knows how to work her smile and her eyes are so beautiful. I feel like if you have naturally large eyes, it can be such an advantage on the pageant stage. There's so many title holders who I think are just so pretty and captivating because of their eyes. She definitely has that going on. And I will say I loved her little extra head tilt at the very end. It was just a special moment that really kind of sealed the deal. It was a great ending to her performance. Guajira didn't quite hit that final pose. There was an adjustment of her feet at the end, and that's something that I, as a judge, definitely pay attention to. But she didn't show anything in her face that would make you think that she didn't hit that pose. So that helps me, when I judge, to overlook that. And I think it was a job very well done. Risa Ralda brought so much energy to the swimsuit competition, but I do want to make a comparison between her and Cartagena. And the reason is because they were the top two, and this is something that I have noticed about a first runner-up or a winner in many pageants, in many organizations, is if you compare just their swimsuit performances or even their gown performances, I've noticed that a lot of queens deliver a memorable performance, but they're never overshooting something. And it's kind of like they're right in the upper middle. They're not bringing low energy. They're not bringing super high energy. They're, they're like right below that. And it's kind of like this really nice middle ground. 
And that's why I wanted to bring up these two because I think that that happens to a lot of contestants and it might be the reason why they don't move forward or they don't win at the end of the day is because they start to overshoot their performances when the winner is always calm, cool, collected, poised. And I think another good example of that could be Miss Universe Philippines this year. A lot of people were making those comments about Beatrice is because she was so calm and poised. So she easily went through each level of competition and easily made it through each cut and then at the end voila becomes the winner so that's just something that I think is kind of interesting if you've noticed that too with winners let me know leave that in the comment section below we love brought happy energy again personally if I were judging she would get a pretty great score from me because I like her sincerity Bolivar what I have to say about her performance is that it was powerful it was well executed and at the end she threw in that little wink it was perfectly timed fabulous next it was time for the onstage question and i know this is something that a lot of contestants are worried about just because there have been controversial questions asked in pageantry and sometimes it can be a little bit scary but i do think that it's something you should think of just as an extension of your personal interview it's not something that you should fear and if you go into it being really scared you're not setting yourself up for success but one of the best things that you can do is to prepare yourself for a great interview and onstage question by creating a personal brand so you know what your message is you know what you want to share with the judges and with the audience and if you struggle doing that then you should check out rehearsed to relatable there are details in the description below overall i will say that i don't think anybody bombed these on stage questions of course i don't speak spanish fluently but the delivery of these questions looked pretty good to me and the translations sound pretty good i think that at the end of the day when it comes to placements judges were thinking about the overall performance of each contestant risaralda if you could be grateful for only one thing about being colombian what would it be and why her answer i am very happy to be colombian for the passion that represents us colombians for the love that we show in everything. I love the energy of Colombia and I love the joy that we demonstrate to the world and the resilience that we have. Thank you. Miss Atlantico. With which physical defects have you struggled with internally? What have you done to overcome this? And what would you say to all the women who are fighting this battle? She said, good evening, Bogota. Good evening, Colombia. I can say that I am an example of overcoming because the pandemic I suffered from an eating disorder. I did not like what I saw in the mirror. Thanks to God, it is something that I overcame. I learned how to love myself, learned what I am worth, the faith that I have in God, and the value we have as women. We are perfect. Miss Bolivar was asked, COVID-19 has changed all of us. The vaccine is a light of hope to eradicate the virus. What would you say to the people that do not want to get vaccines? She said, good evening. I would tell those people to not only think of themselves, to show an act of love to those people that want to keep living a fabulous life, to show an act of humanity getting the vaccine because I did it for my parents. You can do it for everyone. Miss Cartagena. What would you respond to a little girl that would like to know the true definition of beauty? I think she had a great answer for this. I would tell her the true definition of beauty radiates in our spirit and inside of us and comes out to the exterior by a smile, a look, and our act towards others. My advice or message to this little girl is that we are all beautiful, we are all perfect. To love ourselves, respect ourselves, take care of our bodies because it is our temple. Miss Guajira was asked, do you think social media has changed the definition of beauty? I do believe that currently social media is being used in a good way because we are choosing them to show the beauty not only that we have in our exterior, but interior beauty as well. Because of this, influencers now base themselves off of the physical and emotion. That is why I want to say social media is here so we can all better ourselves and so we can make good changes. Miss Vaje. She was asked, there is a Colombian saying that says, the person who recognizes their biggest mistake is on a path of wisdom. What is your biggest mistake you have made and how has it led you to where you are today? She said, good evening, Colombia. The biggest mistake I have made is to judge myself. 
It has been the biggest mistake because I feel I have done a good job. However, it has led me to where I am. I have been resilient, strong, and I'm an example to many women. And I will represent my city how I am doing now. Thank you. Miss Caldas was asked, what are some of the prejudices you have faced and what have you done to free yourself from them? Her answer was, good evening. One of my biggest prejudices is to not feel beautiful and judge myself. All women have an essence and that essence is what we reflect to others and what we show is how they will see us. That is why I need to believe we are beautiful, everyone is. Then we narrowed it down to a top three and from this group of contestants, it didn't surprise me to see who made it to the top three. So our first to answer her question in the top three, and they all got the same question for this, was Risaralda. The question essentially was, what does Colombia United mean to you? She said, for me, a Colombia United that we all wish to have and have been fighting for for years is a peaceful Colombia. A Colombia where every single one of its citizens unites in their inner selves and with their conscience learns to love their light and their dark and learns to love ourselves. Because not only should we respect our differences, but celebrate them, protect them, and uplift them. Miss Cartagena, her response was... For me, a Colombia United raises their voice and knows that despite the differences, it can always reconcile. It can always talk because for every problem, there are multiple solutions. If we work together and we focus on the language of love, we can accomplish and construct a united Colombia. Very well said. Miss Bolivar said, well, for me, a Colombia United is seeing us united by our dreams. A united Colombia is our 24 candidates here today with their best ideas, showing their virtues, their insecurities, and with all of you supporting us. Also, I would like to say a united Colombia is respecting our differences, living in harmony, love, and the fear of God. Thank you very much. There you have it. Those were the top three in their final answer. And for the results, the placements were second runner up, Bolivar. First runner up was Risaralda, and the winner was Miss Cartagena. And congrats to her. By the way, Cartagena last year was one of my huge favorites. I loved her. And so I was just kind of excited to see Cartagena win for the competition just because I was like, ah, she was one of my faves last year. Awesome. Good for them. So congratulations. Definitely look out for her at Miss Universe. Of course, I'm going to be doing recaps and prediction videos and doing coverage of the pageant this year so be sure to stay tuned don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications without hitting notifications you won't know when new episodes are released so thank you for tuning into this one if you have any requests in the future let me know leave those in the comment section below i cannot wait to hear from you and create more episodes for you